So when you are using uh, Auslan interpreters, it's very important to make sure that the interpreter sits next to you or close to you. And so this means that the interpreter is in the same frame as the professional who's doing the speaking and that the deaf person sits opposite. So that the deaf person is able to glance back and forward between the speaker and the interpreter and have them in the same frame. Often I think there's a little bit of confusion around that where the professional thinks the interpreter should sit next to the deaf person. But if I'm the deaf person and the interpreter is sitting here and the speaker is sitting there, I'm constantly looking away to understand what the speaker is saying. I think it's very important too to recognise that if the deaf person is looking at the professional and not at the interpreter, there's a very good chance they're not understanding what's being said. So please don't feel uncomfortable if once you start speaking that the deaf person immediately looks away from you and looks towards the interpreter because this demonstrates that they are listening to you intently by watching the interpreter. Having said that, when you are speaking with the deaf person, it's important to try and maintain eye contact as much as possible. And when the deaf person is responding, more than likely they will look at the professional and the interpreter will be keeping their eye on them from the sideline. So maintain eye contact with the deaf person as much as possible. I think it's also important to recognise that if a deaf person is engaged in doing something else, like taking notes, uh, getting out a prescription, rummaging through their bag, looking for their Medicare card, checking the time, whatever it might be, if they're not looking at the interpreter, it's best not to continue speaking, but wait until they have taken their attention back to the interpreter. It's no good asking a deaf person, oh, so what medications have you got in that bag while they're actually looking through their bag? Because if they're looking through their bag, they haven't heard the speaker, Deaf people generally use interpreters because they don't hear at all. So I would also say do not speak louder, do not enunciate any more than you need to, um, and just be aware that if they're not looking, then they're not hearing or not seeing, and in not seeing, they're not hearing and they're not taking the information in. If uh, you finish the consultation or the engagement with the patient and you have some documentation, don't give, it to the, don't give it to the interpreter. The interpreter isn't there as a support worker, they're not there as an advocate. The interpreter merely relays information from one language to another, following the meaning of the content. They're not there to advocate. If you don't want the deaf person to understand something or don't want to mention something, then don't utter it in the room because the interpreter is obligated to interpret everything said in either language and can actually be struck off the register if they don't. So it's a very strict guideline there. Um, also, if you give the interpreter the document, you're disempowering the deaf person because the interpreter doesn't need to see the document. The interpreter is not going to drive them home. They're not going to take them to the chemist. The interpreter meets them at the hospital, leaves them at the hospital, and they go on their separate ways. Interpreters can't sign accurately while there's something in their hand. So that's something to be very mindful of as well. Another thing to be mindful of is that interpreters don't act as witnesses. Sometimes we're asked to sign a document as a witness and that is something interpreters will not do. So generally I arrive at the health service earlier than the deaf person, not always depending on the situation, but generally. And uh, once arriving there, I do the job. I have no more detail other than what's in the application, the app that we use, stating where and when, sometimes a brief note in what it's relation to what it's relating to, which is always helpful actually. If you're working as an interpreter and you have a little bit of background content before you arrive, you can always do a better job in interpreting uh, because you have a little bit of understanding of what's coming and it gives you time to prepare in how you might uh, phrase certain concepts. Um, so I always arrive independently from the deaf person and I leave independently. I, I'm not their carer, as you said, and. Uh, I am not there to do any follow-up. I'm basically booked by the healthcare provider and I get there, interpret everything that's said in either language and then I leave. And that's pretty much the role of an interpreter, to remain impartial and just do the job there and then. I think it's important also for healthcare professionals to realise when they are engaging with interpreters, whether they be Auslan interpreters or any spoken language, to speak in the first person. Often what I see is professionals saying to me as an interpreter, oh, can you ask them this? Can they do this? Does she have that? 
Whereas you just need to ask the question very directly to the person you're actually consulting with and pretty much ignore the interpreter. The interpreter, if they're not keeping up or they need clarification, they'll ask for it. And I would say just conduct the consultation in the way that you would with anybody else. I would also say to be mindful, sometimes deaf people can give a nod of agreement, but doesn't necessarily mean that they've conceptually understood all the information that you've presented. Sometimes that nod can mean, oh, they're still speaking, oh yeah, information's still coming out of their mouth, oh yes, the interpreter's still moving their hands, oh yes, it's all still going on. It doesn't necessarily mean that the person has understood everything that you've said. Unfortunately for some members of the deaf community, there is a deprivation in language, and that is because of uh, access to education, no shared language in the family home, uh, parents not signing, 96, 95, 6% of deaf children are born to hearing families and many of those parents don't sign and so therefore there's no shared language in the home and no incidental learning which can also mean that conceptually some deaf people, and I'm not saying all, some deaf people out there have better, better written English than I do, uh, but may not conceptually understand everything you're talking about, particularly in those complex subject matters and it's sometimes worthwhile to just check to see if they've understood. Not do you understand, but can you tell me what I've told you? Are you able to reiterate? When I talk about this particular concept, what does that mean for you? Do you understand what your discharge process is? Can you tell me what that is? So just reinforcing and following up is quite important culturally as well. Because usually the, the priority is to treat, but uh, whilst treating, the physical condition, we're not actually treating the potential mental, spiritual well-being scenario and that can be more traumatic for deaf people. Having an interpreter there is liberating and emancipating and it gives a great sense of ease because all of a sudden the person is empowered, empowered to understand the information and make the informed decision and make comment. And it helps the medicos as well because they're getting the information they need and it's accurate because it's coming from the individual they need it from. I've, I've gone to the hospital and interpreted for deaf people and they've been there for three or four days and I'm waiting for the doctors to come and do their rounds and so while I'm standing bedside I ask a few questions to try and get some background information and some content in order that I can do a better interpretation when the conversation occurs with the medicos and they'll give me a diagnosis and when the professional comes around, the diagnosis is completely different. So the deaf person has made a complete assumption about what they're there for and what is wrong with them. And they've done that because they haven't had accurate access to the information because no interpreter's been afforded to them for the last three days they've been there.